So you're at this underground fighting ring and everybody around you is taking bets on who's gonna win this next match that's about to start. In one corner you've got this girl, she's pretty cute, just jumping around, happy to be there. And in the other corner there's Muhammad Ali, somehow resurrected in his prime, just throwing jabs left and right in his corner, raring to go. Who are you gonna pick to win this match? The answer is pretty obvious and let me tell you, it isn't Muhammad. <laughs> Corner, we've got Tojo Ram, the disgraced boxing genius. And in this corner, we've got the Revolution Princess Hongo Hina. Here in the underground fighting organization of Valkyria, there is no match timer and no rules. Upon seeing her opponent, Tojo doesn't see what all the fuss is about. I mean, this? This girl's the champion of the organization? You gotta be kidding me. I mean, she certainly has the size and intimidation factor over Hina, but Hina isn't worried because Slowpoke. Huh? Hey, they're not just about to start. Now the fighters take their positions. The anticipation hangs thick in the air. I'm pretty sure she just called me Slowpoke. I don't care what funny idea you've got in your head, but me? Of all people? Slow? I'll crush you. And with that absolute jump scare out of the way, the match begins. Choju throws the first attack. It misses, but Slowpoke would not be a descriptor I give her. She throws three flicker jabs in the span of what must be a millisecond. And these flicker jabs are harder to predict than a regular punch. I really like how MAM, or M-A-A-M, illustrates these jabs. Like mini explosions popping off, and seeing Hina's bangs blow back from the wind that Toju's punches create is a really cool way to show how quickly the punches are flowing. MORE JABS! They've all failed to reach. No, not one has struck home, but they work their magic still. Hongo can't close the distance. Of course. What do you say to that, bitch? Am I still a slow poke? Yep, just as slow as I thought. I'll kill you! just happened? She, she slipped past the jab and countered it, I think, yes! She did it again. Uh, we need a doctor, quickly! She's down, 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 down! The fight is over! The pro boxer's been flattened, knocked out with a clean punch. Yay, a perfect revolution. Tojo did all that flicker jabbing, but it was all for naught because Hina finishes her off in one hit. And what a hit it is because Tojo is left with a dent in her jaw. Much to the disappointment of Nozomi, the owner of this particular underground ring. You see, fans of these fights love seeing Hina's strength, but since she is unstoppable, no one is willing to bet on her opponents because no one seems to last long enough to even put up a fight. And without that betting money going around, this small underground organization could go... could go under. Which brings up a really interesting premise for the story to bounce off from. Who can Nozomi bring in as a worthy opponent for that monster that is Hina? And it brings up a cool dynamic that Hina isn't necessarily the hero here. We don't want to see her win all her matches because that would mean Nozomi's business could go bankrupt. But we don't want to see her lose all the time either, that wouldn't be entertaining. So that sets us up for some, hopefully, intense battles where there are no clear victors in the future. But who exactly is Nozomi and how did this little organization start? Well, Nozomi was once part of an underground fighter scene herself, but as a fighter. After a match, however, she got fired due to her matches being a little too boring. She's a good fighter, but too good. She ends up drawing out her matches by getting her opponents in a lock, and they just kind of sit there until the opponent taps out. Not super entertaining from a crowd perspective. Nozomi being someone who turned her underground fighting into a way of paying the bills, she finds herself among an interesting cast of friends. There is Mitani Hana, head of the Yakuza family, and there is Iori Achika, Metro PD, part of the juvenile division. Needless to say, she is not one of the good ones. The three of them have very little going on as is. A broke Yakuza, a jobless bum, a dirty cop. Losers. It'd be faster just to call us that. One night while walking home, the three see a group of girl delinquents getting into a scrap, which sparks Nozomi to have an idea, to start her own underground ring. With the three losers working together, they pull off the first event, but Nozomi is not satisfied. The fighters were just some of the delinquents they pull off the street after all. The fights were more along the lines of something you would see on World Star and not a professional club. Just wilds flailing around, as Nozomi puts it. What they need are fighters with charisma. 
strong fighters that can also draw people in. Ichigo has someone in mind and they venture off to a prestigious school made for rich girls. Where they see... Hongo Hina, aka the deadliest schoolgirl in Japan. A freak of nature once at the center of a plot to overthrow the government. <laughs> overthrow the- Shut up, skink! The rest of the chapter is really dedicated to building up what a dangerous girl Hina is. Despite what you may assume about her because of her appearance, Hina has been trained in intense combat, with guns, knives, the works, due to her being the adopted daughter of an insane cultist leader. And as the chapter progresses, it's slowly revealed that Hina may have been the one pulling the strings rather than her adopted father. While this is an absolutely insane backstory for a character to be all dumped on us at once, oh boy, did it work for me. For the type of story this is, it did a great job in explaining to me why this character is to be feared. Hina is genuinely scary. Her demeanor makes her unpredictable, and when she pulls off moves like this and strikes faces like this, all I can get is a chill down my spine. I mean, she is absolutely unhinged. There's a moment when she attacks Nozomi out of the blue. Nozomi being someone Hina likes to play with because Nozomi is actually able to keep pace with her. Nozomi somehow managing to get the upper hand on Hina puts her in a leg lock. Imagine thinking you have the upper hand on your opponent, you got them in a leg lock only for them to lift you off the ground like a five pound weight. And of course what will make or break the series are the fights. Are they as engaging as the setup that presents them? The first fight against Hina is of course one-sided, but it serves its purpose to display how strong Hina is. So when we do get an opponent who can keep up, they absolutely deliver. Fights in Strike It Rich are brutal. The art really does an incredible job in showing the tremendous, unyielding impact of these fighters' attacks. The author, Sanrovich Yabiko, has a little experience writing manga that focuses on martial arts and fighting, so the dialogue is paired beautifully with the art. And with Yabiko pairing with the artist he joined forces with to create How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift, the character designs for the manga sure to be many muscle mommies are great so far. And I say so far because the manga only has 9 chapters released as of making this video. It's fresh, so you can get on the train before it potentially gets big. Oh, did I forget to mention that there's a government conspiracy involving the cult Hina was a part of that may or may not involve chemical weapons, and with Hina being a key to unraveling it, the group is simultaneously trying to crack it open while also trying to satisfy this crazy girl's lust for battle? I gotta say, a star strike at Rich is off to a very fun start, and with it being so new, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Don't forget to like or subscribe, and if you don't, I'll send a Hina after you.